talk about maybe a little bit different topic. It's always, in my opinion, it's a hot topic about medical aspects whenever it comes to any technology. So I thought today what to talk about and how to start with it. Uh, the idea of, uh, I think these definitions, are, I won't read them, but basically there's lots of definitions about AI and, and, and uh, AI, artificial general intelligence, and artificial biologi biological intelligence, and so on. But the idea is basically how we can use this data to be interpreted into the patient's life. And also how we can uh, talk about, today we're talking about wellness and illness. We used to talk about patients, but today the talk, when we started to talk about uh, uh, blockchains and then a metaverse and, uh, and AI, we started to, to shift that one that we, we, are, we have population health rather than uh, sick population health. We are talking about everybody living on this universe, how we can take care of them in the future. But before that, let us talk about what does public health means because the word is so general. There is lots of interpretation about that one. What does it mean in every country? There is population health, there is public health, there is CDC and, and so on. And on all of these aspects, basically, whenever we talk about public health, we talk about a few components. The first and the most important thing is prevention. We need to prevent before coming the disease. And of course, one of the major lessons was that corona was one of the lessons that we, we should be more prepared than ever before. And again, we need to talk to the people. We need to uh, make the people aware of what is happening around. What is the disease? Why this is happening? why this disease is more important than this, why we have to take care about the aerial generations. For example, if you have a diabetic patient who is a child eight years old, we need to talk to that child what does diabetes means in the school. So that's another message that we need to take care of different category at different time. And then we move to surveillance and we need to, those data basically, we have lots of tools to analyze them, but we need to analyze them in the correct way that it will benefit what's coming next not what happened before. And of course, we, we have lots of other things like cost effectiveness, how we can make you know, the, the idea of health economy and health, how we can make this health sustainable, how we can afford the cost, how we can even shift from inpatients to outpatients to personalized medicine and be treated yourself at home. So uh, if, we, if we go, I always like to talk about history because we need to understand how this technology was evolving in medicine, and then how it was specifically evolving in public health. It actually started in 1796. The first technological documented one was based about vaccination and immunization. They found that basically that the vaccination is really important, but we need to record it. So the first technological component came, let's record these, let's have some program to talk about them, and of course, let's register them. But then in the 19th century, they said, okay, we have captured this one. Let's talk about environment and let's talk about sanitization of the water and treatment. That's another carrier of the disease and we need to control it. Then we moved in 20th century to talk about disease prevalence and the development of laboratory techniques, how to diagnose the disease and what are the uh, specific labels that we have to follow on to make sure that we are capturing those diseases. In 2000, we started just briefly talk about electronic medical or health records that I do need to have a specific file. It should be electronic that I need to make sure that all my data is registered at that file instead of having manual uh, documents. Then we moved to digital epidemiology. And that was one of the most important things that started to shift in the context of public health and technology that this is one of the most important aspects that we need to take care of, is basically the distribution of human health care, disease, and so on. And then today, things started to shift so quickly that if you, if you noticed, previously it was in, in 1970, it took like three, 30, uh, almost 200 to 30, 300 years to develop in medicine and public health. But then suddenly, we flew health information system from health electronic records, we started to communicate the health records between hospitals, not instead of a single clinic that I have to go, I have my electronic records. Today we are talking about exchanging 
this information and allowing the exchange of this information between one healthcare facility to another. Then uh, they came the telehealth, and of course, in the pandemic, one of the most successful factors in any single country was to apply telehealth. And that was another shift in the, in the mindset of the professionals to accept to see their patients behind the screen. Then they came the idea of mobile health. We noticed that the, uh, the whole population is dependent on the iPhone, and everybody is, he wants to use that device to configure his own uh, personalized medicine. But yet, still not evolving. Then we talk about data analytics and artificial intelligence. It's not only to store this data, but how to use this data and how to predict what's coming, coming next. And yet, we came, listen, this is not enough. We're gonna talk about public health and emergency response. Not only what's gonna happen next, we have to predict if something will happen, what dialogues we're gonna have to do, how we're gonna counteract these, how we're gonna face them, and what are the methodologies of doing this one. And all of these, by the way, will technology had a role, and a huge role in it. Some of the uh, context we're talking about that this is a lot of uh, expense, yes. But in return, there's a lot of uh, uh, return for investment that you can save a lot of financial and, and cost on, on, in countries, not on, on individuals. So how this will be linked now today, uh, artificial intelligence is gonna be linked to public health. There are a lot of areas. First of all, disease diagnosis. Uh, it can help to identify patterns in large amount of medical data. If we put, for example, um, let's say uh, there was a couple of years ago they were talking about the chatbot. If I am, uh, I have a, a fever, I, spoke, I call this chatbot, I say, listen, I am 43, 46 years old from Dubai and I have fever. And if I continue using the AI within six months, it will capture all the people who are calling for fever and it will capture this data. Eventually, this chatbot will be able to do a provisional diagnosis of the case and give them an advice. Disease outbreak and detection. It can, it can analyze the social media and other sources of the emergency of potential outbreaks. Let's say, for example, that we are having a disease in some part of the world and there is an event in Dubai. So that disease, for example, is one, in one of the countries and the AI basically will will stipulate those information that this country is having certain disease if it comes to Dubai because the temperature is, is, uh, is suitable, because the air is, uh, is fine, they will detect that this is a major threat or minor threat to that area. And then we talked about predictive modeling. It basically can use to predict the spread of infectious disease and assess the potential impact interventions. So not only to predict, basically to give you some measures to counteract. But we move also as we spoke about personalized medicine. This device, this mobile, basically, I need to be advised. I need to self-treat myself. I need to minimize the visits of the patients to the doctors, to the hospitals, by having some measures. So basically, those uh, algorithms and those mathematics, they will basically detect your personality, what things you need to avoid, and what things you need to take care of more. Drug discovery, it can help to identify new drug targets and design more effective drugs, potentially reducing the time and cost. Again, the same uh, example, if I am diabetic and I take a specific uh, treatment for diabetes, it's not basically every single patient has to take the same medication because there is something called resistance. There is something called different types of disease and different types of immunities. So basically, if I take this medication and I'm proving, and the other one is not improving, those analytics will basically be analyzed that my body is not suitable for this medication. And yet, it will also be reflected in manufacturing drugs that we need to manufacture certain types of medication for certain type of people in certain geographical areas. And the last and not least is health behavior change. And this is one of the most touching, touching important future aspects which will flourish a lot with the introduction of AI. I will read this one because it's very important. AI can be used to deliver personalized health interventions such as health coaching or reminders to take medication to support behavior change. And I will highlight on this point more because today we'd like to, we can't talk about all aspects, but we believe in public health that if we change the people behavior, 
we can control and prevent more diseases. So let's talk about some examples. Personalized interventions and, and behavior change. It can analyze large amounts of data, such as electronic health records, wearables, and self-reported information to provide personalized recommendation and interventions for behavior change. A couple years ago, we had some uh, startup companies that came in Dubai, and one of them was talking basically, if I go and wake up in the morning, I need to spend three minutes while I brush my teeth and so on, that mirror will analyze my face and will tell me basically, do I look stressed? Did I sleep well? Uh, I need coffee. And that was something a couple of years ago was already in the uh, talk of the town and it, they started to do it. But what about if it is today that we can use this more and more information that I can put my own information. If my blood pressure is getting high every day at 10 a.m., and the doctor prescribed me medication different timing. So that personal medicine will prefer me taking medication on different timings to control my BP. Virtual health coaches. And I think um, uh, one of the uh, major things was talking about that, um, and specifically in Metaverse, that a lot of people, they preferred to talk to, to coaches, different coaches, and some of them even, they don't want to meet doctors for certain reasons. They don't want to personally come to the clinic and to be seen and so on. So virtual health coaches will also provide some guidance and motivation to them. Predictive analytics, it can analyze, as I said, large amount of databases to identify patterns to predict the future health behaviors and outcomes. This information can help healthcare providers and individuals understand the factors that contribute to the behavior change, so success or failure. So if I am a healthcare provider, and I have already this algorithm in the, the database and AI that I know my exactly what does my patient need and what's happening to them, I could betterly prescribe to them different medications or different lifestyle behavior changes rather than reading from textbooks which always gives the one single advice to whole population. Gamification, and I think um, this will definitely flourish a lot. Uh, the use of games today in healthcare was never uh, talk uh, before about how we can use the games and how we can gam gamify some, some ways of behavior for the patients. But I think, for example, yesterday, Apple, they introduced the Vision Pro, and this is another major change in the lifestyle of, of all of us that I can basically live in my own atmosphere. So gamification will definitely uh, cause a lot of changes in behavior. And definitely we can lots, introduce lots of messages in that one. Let's take one example. Let's use them in school health. Let's use them, for example, today if I want to show the, the, the kids to brush their teeth, uh, what I do basically, I bring those teeth, the, the models with, with lots of um, um, bad images, and then I terrify them that you need to brush your teeth. What if I use some gamification techniques to show them, to make them love the idea of brush the tooth rather than showing them some of those horrific pictures. Remote monitoring and feedback. Uh, there's lots of, uh, for example, physical activity, sleep patterns and so on, wearables and so on. These basically how I can remotely uh, uh, be uh, controlled rather than waiting to see my doctor every time and taking the advice. And this can be applied to different fields of medicine, and especially in mental health today. We, we, there's a lot of need that that current typical visits, visits from between patients and their therapists is not more than enough for all individuals. What if we have those behaviors being recorded and could be giving them different solutions? Uh, social support and peer influence. Uh, facilitate social support networks by connecting individuals with similar health goals. Example again, if I take a medication for blood pressure, uh, for a couple of years, and I feel that my, my blood pressure is not being controlled. What I will do? I will go either to see my same doctor and ask him for different medication, or I will visit another doctor. What if the uh, AI will provide us another alternative way to, to interact with different people from different kinds of the world and see to, to see their experience? The AI by itself say, listen, there is a lot of like 100 people, 200 people, 1,000 people study, showed that if you use this medication or this type of, of food or something, it reduces 
blood pressure. So this is going to be another source of information, a reliable one, that can people use it, and instead of just, again, going back to typical uh, medicine. My last slide is to conclude. This is just a glimpse of what's happening in healthcare. We, previously, last year, we, we spoke about metaverse, and this is another way that people, they can uh, talk to each other, that create your own avatar, to see a, a doctor avatar, and then create your own room to see that physician. And then AI today is flourishing with different uh, uh, ways. Definitely, they're going to interchange. But there is much more is coming in medicine. This is an, a question to be left for you to think about that today the advancement in technologies uh, and introducing to medicine is not going to stop. The only thing we have to think about is how we have to adapt ourselves, what applications we can use it to benefit us, and what implications we, we should be careful of not using them. Yesterday, and even today, I was talking to some friends that they've introduced the uh, Vision Pro. It will have definitely uh, lots of uh, benefits. But if you go to medicine, some of the other aspect, they say, what's going to be the effect of this on eye and your responses in your body, and especially in your head? Will this affect you? The second question, will this change the behavior of doctors becoming more intelligent or less? Because they're going to rely more on the experience of the others. So it's not basically, there's no wrong or right. It's basically how we're going to use it. But this is coming. We need to definitely use, I think, Dr. said uh, when he was introducing that about lots of uh, governance models about it. It's going to definitely be different. It's going to be changed. How it's going to change, we never know. Definitely, there's going to be bad things and good things. Definitely, there will be lots of laws not allowing to go further, but then eventually we will have to go through this one because the whole population is, is getting different. The contact between different civilization and different cultures are happening with this uh, way. So AI will be one gateway to solve a lot of problems, but at the same time, we have to be ready for what's coming next. Thank you very much.